All right, so I think I figured out an easy way how to give this a positive lock. Uh, all I need to do is just drill two offset holes right through the side of it. I'm guessing sixteenth of an inch or three thirty seconds or something like that, something smaller than an eighth. And uh, then I just need to take a piece of um, spring steel wire, about the same size, some piano wire, and uh, just bend it into a square with uh, the split at one end that shape with the split right there and I'm just going to bend that apart like that put it through both holes push it back this way slide it in behind this and then that'll make a spring that flaps up and down right here and uh, the reason why I know that is because I googled safety chain and uh, when I saw the design they had I went oh I'll just build one of those uh, because I don't want to buy a chain because I'm trying not to spend money even though I keep doing it anyway so we're gonna do that so I just slapped this on the belt sander and sanded down two flats so uh, I have a flat spot to start the drill on, and I'm just going to take this drywall screw and uh, just mark out two spots about a quarter inch from each other, maybe a little more, maybe three eighths. And I'm just going to whack this with a hammer, give me a dimple, and we're just going to run some holes through with the drill and try not to break the drill bits. All right, and that was actually uh, a lot easier than I expected. The 16 inch uh, drill bit, 16th of an inch, not a 16 inch drill bit. Although I do have a, I've got a 32 inch drill bit over there, but anyway, the 16th inch drill bit zipped right on through there. Uh, shout out to Project Farm. That man has saved me more time, frustration, and money than any other human being alive. If you want to support someone on Patreon, go support that man. You know, every every time I'm thinking about buying some sort of tool or some other sort of something, and I got no idea where to start or what brands are good, he puts out a video like every single time, like a week after I start thinking about it and just saves my ass. He is, you are a saint, man. All right, so I got no idea what this thing is, but uh, it's a, it's spring steel and it's almost the right size. I think I just, I think I can just put it on the belt sander and take a little, kiss a little bit off of one side, or I might be able to find a drill bit, my box of mystery, uh, that's just slightly larger that I can ream those out to. Um, according to this, they're, uh, they're Kirsch drapery hooks. So uh, we're going to try and make this work. Should be pretty easy. I think I can just break this front part off to test on. Well, uh, that's what I'm going for, but turns out this isn't spring steel, so uh, I bend it down and it doesn't come back into place, but uh, that's what I'm going for. So uh, I'm going to get into the boxo metal bits and uh, see if I can find a spring that I've already torn up that I can use, and if not, I'm going to go get my roll of piano wire. And just like that. We got ourselves a little sprang. It's a little lopsided, ain't quite perfect, but neither is anything else on this boat, so it fits. Uh, I just found this spring, just cut off about a probably four inch strip, and uh, used that to make it. Uh, it took longer than it should have, uh, because I about damn near put a nail through the back of my hand today, pulling up subflooring. So I don't have all of my grip strength in my right hand, and I'm right handed, so that was kind of a pain. But uh, we got it. And uh, we're going to slap that back on the boat. And uh, I'm probably just going to buy a set uh, with these on it anyway. And then I'm just going to cut it in half and I'm going to use that to make chains to hold it onto the boat. Or uh, I might find another one of these somewhere and uh, do the same thing. And then just have, uh, you know, one chain to hold it onto the boat. And that's installed again. And... Well, bam. It's a little bit tight. But, um, still works. You just gotta kind of, you gotta really want it to come off. And you gotta really want it to go on. But, uh, it goes on. That's also kind of a good thing because, uh, it won't come off on its own. So, there. Yeah, that's pretty slick. So I just need to replicate that again times two and, uh, bolt that to here. Um, where are those? Okay, oh, sweet. Good. These go all the way through, so I can just clean those up. You know, you're never going to make friends if you just bark at them all the time. You know what? No one's ever going to come over and pet you. Don't just run away from your problems, Ginger. So anyway, I just came in here with the step bit and just did some of that and uh, opened it up a good bit. We got enough I can put like a, probably force a 5 sixteenths, maybe 3 eighths bolt all the way through and then just cinch down chains on either side. Hmm, may still need some cleanup. I think I've got some uh, stepless step bits that I can try that are a lot narrow, narrower. This was just the only one that was laying out in the open. 
And that's exactly what she took. Just came out with a stepless step bit, and uh, well, bam, I can get a, I'm confident I can get a 7 16 or maybe even a half clean through that. And there's the 7 16 bolt that came out of the roller for that uh, old boat trailer I took apart. So, uh, doesn't quite cinch all the way down, but I'm gonna have a chain out of there. And it's close enough, I can just cut some more threads on it. We know how that works. There, that all worked until I find something beefier and better. So that's probably good enough. We'll just forget about it. Alright, so here's what I cobbled together for trailer chains. So, as you can see here, they're very wrong. And I've got them in there with the very wrong bolt that I showed you before, but that's the only one I had that was even close to being the right size, and I still had to put a spacer on it. All the other ones I had that were much more appropriately sized were half an inch too short. So that's what we went with. So anyway, I dug all through the garage and I managed to dig up exactly enough chain and tow hardware to be able to do some. Uh, this looks like a, like a seat belt off of a, off of a rope swing. Um, don't know where these one foot sections of chain came from, but I have them got one little attachment there uh, another one here I think both of these got picked up off the side of the road that one had to bend back in shape and uh, then uh, actually pretty good hook right there and yeah they're just clamped right on there so uh, I'm sure that one will support most of the load and that one will break and then they'll both break uh, but I also don't plan on that coming off anytime soon plus that locks down with so much force I have to beat it off with a hammer so I don't, I don't think that's going to come off. Also, I brought my life jacket back and a kayak paddle I had. I had a spare one of these, so that works out perfectly. All right, today's the moment of truth. We got the motor on. We got the boat all loaded up. We got it tied down there. Got it tied down at the front. Got the safety chain on. Got the extendomatic for the trailer hitch so it's not running into my tire. Got the trolling motor on. Got that pylon fixed. Just shove some angle iron in it. And I got my toe shoes on. Uh, so. We're going to haul this thing out to my uncle's, put her in the creek, and uh, make sure she floats. I turned her over, looked at all the rivets. All the rivets look beautiful. Um, didn't see any other holes. Uh, all my 5200 patches are holding up on the keel. So I'm, I'm ready to send her. Uh, I'm just going to put her in the water today, make sure she floats. Uh, then if I'm feeling uh, cheeky, I'm probably going to uh, take off the rope that I'll have, uh, tying it on, just because I'm putting it in a tidal creek. So. Uh, the chances of me getting sucked out with the tide and dying in the ocean are uh, n not zero. So uh, if, uh, if it looks like everything's working, I'll put her back on the trailer, uh, take her off, and then just uh, spin her around in the creek for a couple hundred yards and uh, then put her back on the trailer before DNR finds me. So uh, without any further ado, uh, I'm going to go get the gas can, uh, stick it in the um, boat, tie it down, and uh, we're going to haul her. Hey, that actually works out pretty good. Uh, killed two birds with one stone. I didn't have to tie down my life vest to anything and uh, I can keep the gas can from getting beat to hell. So uh, she's snug as a bug in there. So we're gonna send that.
she made it here in one piece. Uh, nothing fell off, nothing broke. Everything's still attached, nothing's really moved. The only thing to note is that uh, she likes to come up, and that's uh, just because I got a ramp there. So I'm probably gonna need to make something there that I can latch over the front of that just to keep it from coming up over the top. Uh, but uh, the hooks keep it in place, so I do have that. So I'm not worried about it going into the Jeep, but yeah, just one thing to work on. Um, out here at the family boat ramp, and uh, it looks like we can't put it in right now. I was gonna put it in at uh, low tide. I'd rather do it at high tide, but that's just, you know, today was the day and uh, um, it's low tide today, but uh, the, the boat ramp is uh, covered in pluff mud right now, so it looks like it's uh, accreting on this side of the creek. So I'm not going to be able to put it in at low tide because I'll get uh, stuck. So uh, I'm going to park this over here and uh, we'll have to try this again uh, next week, I think. Uh, some other week. Uh, hope they don't mind me stashing it here. It also looks like the trolling motor moved, which I expected. Yeah, but that's no biggie. I just have to remember to do that whenever I move it. But yeah, the hubs aren't hot. Um, everything did great, but uh, not putting in the water today. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, all right, and uh, there she'll sit. I also have this <gasps> canvas boat cover that I'm gonna put on it, uh, you know, just to keep crap out of it. And uh, that's for a 16 foot uh, V hole. So uh, that probably, uh, probably won't work. There. That actually works decently. It's not great, but uh, it'll keep the sun off of it. I just don't want the gas tank blown up. Well, here's the boat ramp. As you can see, there's a, there's a whole pile of mud. Uh, it's actually a really good boat ramp. Um, I guess my grandpa built this. He did a damn good job. Oh, Lord. Yeah, but uh, as you can see there, uh, the ramp goes, goes all the way down. Uh, it gets plenty deep, but um, that's that's 18 inches of mud right there. So uh, yeah, there's there's no way I'm backing the Jeep all the way into that because uh, the Jeep will have to be in that. So uh, we're we're gonna wait till uh, the water's like there instead of there. Started the motor, got everything primed. There you go.
He's less weight in the back. It's a 12 foot jumbo with a fucking 120 pound motor on it. Pound idiot. That was a bit disappointing, but uh, wouldn't be a boat if it wasn't giving you problems every single fucking step of the way. So uh, she's just gonna sit here um, until I get around to that again. Uh, probably not until I hear back from DNR about that title. Um, so once I hear from them, uh, then I'll probably start worrying about it some more. <laughs> 